Hello and welcome back to the DSA classes. The question that I'm going to discuss today is going to make use of many of the concepts that we discussed in the previous class. Anyways, what really is the question? The question is to count the number of set bits in a given number. To count the number of set bits in a given number means what? Let me explain. Assume I have n, which is a number, which is 42. 42, if I represent it in binary, this is how it looks like. I hope you're able to think. As you can see, there are a total of three ones. Three ones are there, right? So how many set bits are there? Three set bits. And that must be the output of your program. Well, a very simple brute force approach could look like this, right? You convert it into a binary string. If it is a string, you have index values. You now maintain a variable called as count, initialize it to zero. Start from the last index of the string, right? And then check if in case the character at the ith position is it equal to one. If it is equal to one, you found a set bit and hence please increment the value of count. I hope you're able to think. And just keep coming backwards, 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 backwards. And by the time you reach the end of the loop, the count will reflect the total number of set bits. I hope you're able to think. Now this is a simple brute force approach. How to convert a given number from decimal to binary, you know, there is a function for that. And uh, based on getting that string of binary values, how to operate it in, on it also, you know. Now, what could be the time complexity of such an operation? I have told you, whenever you take a number in the decimal form, convert it into the binary form and you're iterating over the bits, always it is going to be big O of log n. That is what the time complexity will look like. Of course, I'm not going to write code for this. I'm sure all of you are capable enough to write this code. My duty is to show you a more efficient way to do this. And efficiency will come while working with bits only if you make use of bitwise operators. Now we're able to think. So how can we use bitwise operators to count the total number of set bits in a given number? Let me show you. Alright my dear friends, now the optimized solution is something which will be making use of the concepts you previously learned, right? Now observe and observe carefully. Let us assume n is 42. This is n in binary, right? Now previously we observed that if you have n, if you take n minus 1, n minus 1 means in this case it will be 41. This is 41 in binary. And if you apply AND operation between them, something interesting you get as the result. So what is that, what is that observation? Watch it. n and n minus 1. If you do, first thing that happens is the rightmost set bit becomes unset. Unset means it will be made 0. Second observation is all the bits to the left are going to be the same. All the bits to the left will remain the same. And the third thing is all the bits to the right now become zeros. And would you agree if I do that, that is what I get as a result. See, rightmost set bit, that the second bit was 1, it became 0. Left side, everything remains the same, right side is 0. Now, would you agree that in a way, if I have unset the rightmost set bit, in a way, it is like I'm counting. Every time, if I unset the rightmost set bit, it is like me counting. Okay, first I have unset it. So, one, uh, 1 I have found. Next rightmost, if I unset it. Next one I have found. Next rightmost, if I unset it, next one I have found. I hope you're able to think, which means this result, I will update it as the value of n. If I update as the value of n, in binary it looks like this. If you convert it into decimal, n becomes 40. I hope you're able to think. Because see, if you take that new value of n, convert it into decimal, definitely it is 40. Now this is a new value of n. Now again I will do n and n minus 1. What is the beauty of doing n and n minus 1 is that the rightmost set bit, which is that next one, will be unset. Left will be the same, right will become zeros. And definitely that is what has happened. I hope you're able to think. Which means don't you think it's like me now counting the second set bit? Would you agree with me? And then if this I convert it into decimal, it now becomes 32. And now n is 32. Now, there is one more one. You can notice one more one is there. I need to count that also. Simple. n and n minus 1. If I do, then definitely this is the value of n that I get. And if you notice, it's all zeros. If it is all zeros, then n has become 0. 
the moment n becomes 0 i will stop repeating this operation of doing n and n minus 1 updating the value of n n and n minus 1 updating the value of n the moment n becomes 0 i have to stop so the number of times i perform this operation see i'm just marking it that is the first time this is the second time this is the third time how many times did i do it three times how many set bits were there in the original value of n three so have you got your answer which means if i just maintain a value called as count initialize it to zero and the first time i perform this operation if i increment it it becomes one second time i perform the operation if i increment it it becomes one third time i perform the operation i increment it it becomes three i hope you're able to think so one two and three so three times i hope you're able to think hence this is all your simple optimized logic is now what would be the time complexity of this we will see but first let's go write code i'm just keeping those iterations here for reference right now see all you have to do is i'll just create a static uh, function uh, which has to return the count so integer and uh, i'll call this as count set bits right it'll accept n and uh, inside this count set bits i told you it's a very simple operation the core operation is to take the given value of n do and operation with n minus 1 right and update this as the value of n this must repeat and keep repeating as long as n is not equal to 0 because the moment n becomes 0 you must stop so don't you think i should put it inside a while loop so i'll tell as long as n not equal to 0 or you can just tell greater than 0 greater than equal to 0 greater than that's fine any confusion till here right equal to means for 0 also it'll work we don't want that okay now every time i loop every time i loop the first time i did this i would have unset the rightmost bit which is equivalent to counting it so i need to keep count so let's go on top create an integer variable called as count whose initial value is going to be zero and i will every time i do this operation i'm going to increment the value of count i hope you're able to think right so it will keep happening keep happening the moment n becomes zero i will come how many uh, ones I would have unset? That is the number of ones I had. Return count every time. That's pretty much it. So if n is 42, there were three set bits. That should be our answer. Let's call the function count set bits. Great. If I execute and give the value as 42, press enter you have perfectly it works right now the question is what could be the time complexity let me show you all right see now when it comes to the time complexity usually it is always the worst case scenario that you need to think about okay so if you look at the worst case scenario it would be where let us assume n value is 255 if that was represented in binary you can notice all eight bits would be one so you'll have to do that n and n minus 1 operation for a total of 8 times for all the set bits to become unset right so first time the rightmost bit will be unset then like this then like this then like this then like this if you keep doing it it becomes 0 when it becomes 0 you stop but if you totally count it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 bits has been unset so the count is 8 right which means ultimately you had to iterate over all the bits if you have to iterate over all the bits then you know if n is your input size and you want to now uh, tell the complexity in terms of n it is always big o of log n i hope you're able to think so now you may say previous brute force approach also was log n this is also log n so this is really not efficient i'll stick to my brute force approach no 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 that is a wrong way to analyze trust me this is more efficient maybe in the worst case both will take log n right but for other cases let's check it out if you look at this guys uh, for example let us assume like this this is the binary number that i have you can see there are only two ones so if you notice the first time if i do n and n minus one 
uh, one of those bits will be unset. Next time I do n and n minus 1, everything will become 0. So how many iterations? Two iterations, right? Within two iterations, you got the count. But here, in brute force, you will make i start from the last bit. i has to go till the first bit, irrespective of whether there are bits or not. Which means, even though there are only two set bits, here it still had to go through all of the bits. So tell me, which one is more efficient? I'm leaving it up to 